What up film family, in today's video we're talking about the Rollei AFM 35. The first thing I wanted to mention about the Rollei AFM is this is just another iteration of the Fujifilm Class A, they're calling that version, which is just the first class version that Fujifilm made. It has the same build and the same exact features as this camera, so if you end up liking this camera or are interested in it, you can also look that up. Many film photographers say that this is the closest competition to the Contax T2 as in it has aperture priority, it has a 38 millimeter lens, and it's in the 2.6 to 2.8 range. The one advantage that this definitely has over the Contax T2, it does have true 2.6 aperture when you're shooting in it. And the quick advantage of the Contax T2 over this, the Contax T2 has a 1 500th of a second shutter speed. And this top shutter speed is the 290th of a second so that's definitely something to consider those are the main things that i appreciate on one camera over the other The shooting experience on the Rollei AFM is amazing. I love the rangefinder viewfinder. I love how easy and simple it is to change the aperture priority dial. I also just really enjoy how the camera feels in your hand. It doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off. I never felt like this was an issue when shooting with the camera. It doesn't feel heavy. It feels a little lighter than the Contax T2 in my opinion. The experience of a point and shoot, this is ideal for my style. You can depend on the meter and you can depend on the focusing system on this camera. It has not failed me. I have shot three rolls on this camera and all of them 
are in focus and all of them are well exposed. So no complaints there. With other point and shoots, I have definitely experienced missed focusing. At least like two or three frames are out of focus and then the metering is off on some shots. Another highlight is that the camera never used flash when it wasn't needed. Sometimes other point and shoots that I have shot with will use the flash and it definitely didn't need the flash or the flash made no impact to the actual image. So it's something to definitely think about. The dependability of this camera is just something huge to highlight. You worry less about the camera and you just focus on the actual capturing of the moment. And that's just something that this will give you is a peace of mind. The main two complaints I kept seeing from other photographers was one, the focusing. They're saying that when you press the shutter, which pressing now, and then it takes a, a second to actually grab focus, it takes too long. I understand that for sports and stuff like that, you really want focus to be quicker than this one second. But it, to me, it's not a huge deal. I think that there are definitely other options and solutions to that. It's not on this camera, but you can use a different camera. I don't think that people should depend on point and shoots to get fast focusing or shots. The other complaint is the fastest shutter speed on this camera, which is 290th of a second. This is another feature that I didn't really feel like I lacked. I went out and shot my first roll just on Pimo, depending on the camera's actual features of autofocus and auto exposure, just trusting it as is. And I believe this camera did a great job. Shooting my first three rolls, I didn't notice any moment or frame that is out of focus because the shutter speed wasn't fast enough. Again, maybe it's my style and I also didn't notice a time where the camera took too long to focus If you shoot film photography, it's already slows you down It's a slower process and to understand where those photographers are coming from This is considered a luxury or high-end point-and-shoot So I understand the wanting of 500th of a second and then wanting a faster focus in reality I don't think that it's a huge deal breaker to count this camera out as a Contax D2 competitor, but I understand where they're coming from. This this is a pricey camera, and again, if this camera wasn't great, the prices on it wouldn't be going up along with the Contax T2. Go Penelope, go! Uh. So now quickly I'm just gonna go over my top photos. So the first top photo that I selected is actually the second photo that I took of the San Rafael Theater. I really appreciate this photo. I feel like there's a lot going on and the more that you stare at it, the more that you see. First thing that you see is the person there walking under the shadows. The first thing that I noticed was that guy under the theater ceiling. He's just looking at the poster there. And then I purposely waited for someone to walk by and add another layer to to this photo and then I didn't really even notice this lady already sitting there 
and her dress matches the the colors of the poster that she's right next to. And the more that you look at this photo, I feel like there's more that you appreciate. You can notice the lighting on the left and right side. You can notice the lines of the, the actual roof of the theater and then that red line in the middle and then the text of the actual display of the movies. So definitely my first top photo, it was only my second shot. My second top photo is of me being on the Civic Center roof with Kodak and the sun is rising. The lighting in there was just incredible. I really enjoy the lighting coming through that side and the shadows and all the other lights coming from the right side. With the rule of thirds and the way that the sun is coming in onto that chair, it quickly becomes the main subject. So the third top photo is of the Challenger here behind the fence. This is just another cinematic scene to me. Challenger is obviously the main subject. I like how I frame the corner of that warehouse and there's a line going through guiding you through the photo. You end up staying and focusing on the Challenger there. Even the way that the lighting was hitting that day and the way that this Kodak Gold interpreted this scene, this almost feels like a more digital photo than it is film. If you really like the characteristics of film, maybe this higher end lens isn't really going to display it every single time for you. My fourth top photo, I actually took this photo with the Mamiya 6 as well. This time around, the court is a lot less crowded. With the Mamiya 6, there's a lot of people and things going on at once. And in this frame specifically, you can just see the court and then two people playing basketball, a father and son combo maybe. I simply never get over this view. It definitely reminds me of the Pursuit of Happiness and the Princess Diary scenes that are in San Francisco. This is not even the same court from those movies, but it just gives me that feeling is all I'm saying. My last top photo ends up being a package deal again. It usually is when it comes to family photos, but to go into this into depth, I really love these photos, which is the first photo of my nieces here. I went to go watch them train and I can almost hear the word cheese when I took this photo. I'm pretty sure I said it but it definitely shows in the photo they're they're happy they're smiling i really like the lighting in the photo even though they seem a little more orange and yellow than normal i don't know what caused that the next top photo is just a closer shot of their shoes one is in focus and one is not in this shot even though they are identical twins they, they still have different personalities and in these photos it shows with even just one being able to stay still and then the other one moving and the way they even like to rock their socks and the camera does a great job again exposing you can really just see the details in their soccer cleat the last photo of this group and the last top photo is of my nieces running back into their training session and it's just a very cute photo of them running off i really like it i definitely think it could be a, like a wallpaper or you could print out and many people will enjoy there's a story there it's them just running onto the field happy to go to training join the rest of the group and then the way that the light comes in really highlights them well the subject matter and the way i ended up taking this photo with the combo of this camera it just works really well but yeah I definitely think this is a great camera. My final thoughts are that I think the user experience, definitely I enjoy it, if not more than the Context C2, to the same level. I see myself comparing this camera side by side with the Context T2. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to see that sooner than later. If you have the money to buy it, this is definitely a good camera. This is still $200 to $100 less than a Context T2. And it's all really up to you if it's worth it to get the Context T2 over this until you see my video. And it's also up to you if you want to spend the $700 more to get the Class S, which fixes a lot of the complaints that other photographers have about this camera. The Rolly AFM 35 is a great camera. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel, hit that like button for me, and as always guys, happy shooting.